Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the 30th of the second month on our Creator's calendar as we comprehend it, the last Shabbat of the second month of spring. And it happens to be the 11th of May, 2024, on the Gregorian calendar. And we're going to take a little segue from our current reading of Bereshit or Genesis to cover a topic that came up today in our discussions for our fellowship. We've read this before. It's from 1QS, part of what is called the community rule. And it's also called the secretarian um, writings in some of the scholarly con uh, contexts. Depends on what versions you're looking at. The older version of the Dead Sea Scrolls called it the community rule, which is what I'm familiar with. That's why I use that. But this part in particular is one section that also goes in line with what you can find in the Testaments of the Twelve Patriarchs, which is the, the deathbed writings or statements to the children of the, the Twelve Sons of Jacob. And it was recorded by their children and, and handed down, right? It's also found in what we call the Apostolic Constitutions, the Epistle of Barnabas, the Shepherd of Hermas, and other writings. There, there might be even more where these themes are alluded to, including the two ways and the way of life and death that Moshe speaks of. But they aren't gone over in great detail in what we call the Bible. If it was, then the nature of the battle against us would be clearly known, and we wouldn't have nearly as many problems as we do today. But that's why it was hidden. However, one thing I want you to keep in mind before we read here is the visitation here. That word is pakata, or that's pay. Hey, hey, um, Dalit, hey, I believe I'll have to get it directly, but I'll get the word for you. However, the word for visitation and the word for a judge or an overseer in the original covenant writings or what they call the Old Testament is very similar. The only difference is the visitation has a hey at the end of it. And the one who is the judge or overseer who exhorts the people about the visitation to come is named that just for context of the use of that word and what it was representing both in a person as a judge or overseer over the people trying to get them to be right you know living rightly or when he does visit but um one other thing is if when we read about the effects when you read about the fruits of what kind of spirit being in you happens when he visits and then you look at what happened when our Mashiach came, you will see a direct correlation in his response to different people based on how they were reacting, the, the one that was in them and the motivating force, who they served, if you will. So with that being said, this is one QS from the community rule, and it is part, um, yeah, it's just a section of it. It's not the entire thing. So it says, the intelligent shall instruct all the sons of light and shall teach them the nature of all the children of men according to the kind of ruach which they possess, the signs identifying their works during their lifetime, their visitation for chastisement, and the time of their reward. From the Elohim of knowledge comes all that is and shall be. Before ever they existed, he established their whole design. And when, as ordained for them, they come into being, it is in accord with his esteemed design that they accomplish their task without change. The laws of all things are in his hand, and he provides them with all their needs. He has created man to govern the world and has appointed for him two ruachoth, or spirits, in which to walk until the time of his visitation, the ruachoth of truth and unrighteousness. Until the time of his visitation, 
when he came the first time and he died, it was to give the renewed covenant for those of that time to be the first fruits of the age to come, where they would be born again after immersion and being separated from the evil Ruach to be only indwelled with his, to which they would have no more evil inclination like Adam before the sin in the garden, all right, on the condition that they don't sin. Now that, that condition of being was murdered out of existence. That was his body dying in history. What we'd call the massacres of the Romans during the times leading up to the papacy and then the dark ages through that, where they were still being, uh, showing forth the signs of the sufferings of his body in their flesh, if you will. <clears throat> but back on track. It says, those born of truth spring from the fountain of light, but those born of unrighteousness or spring from a source of darkness. Just to re you know, finish that thought real quick, I'm sorry. The first time he came, his visitation was to separate the Ruach Oath as a foreshadow, a type of first fruits of the age to come, in which when he returns in his visitation again, Satan will be imprisoned for a time, a thousand years, in which we will not have that evil inclination for everyone in the world, but those that are of the first resurrection, if you recall, will be made like messengers and the second death will have no power over them, so they will never be tempted by the tempter again. Those that are not made like messengers, but if you will, are still in the sense mortal and can die potentially during that time, the ones that will be living upwards to a thousand years. This is the time in the foretellings where it mentions that the child dying a hundred years old will be greatly lamented, but the sinner dying at a hundred years old will be lightly esteemed. Okay, not that you can't die, but that it's conditional on your willingness to walk in a way that you choose, but that evil influence won't be there. Those both happen in the times of his visitation. And again, after Satan's release, then it's all done. That's when the father is going to dwell. So you still have that visitation aspect, if you will. <clears throat> this is all the children of righteousness are ruled by the prince of light and walk in the ways of light. But all the children of unrighteousness are ruled by by the messenger of darkness and walk in the ways of darkness. The messenger of darkness leads all the children of righteousness astray and until his end, all their sin, inequities, wickedness, and all their unlawful deeds are caused by his dominion in accordance with the mysteries of Eloah. Not a bit of it is of our Mashiach, okay? He has nothing to do with him. Every one of their chastisements and every one of their seasons of their distress shall be brought about by the rule of his persecution. For all his allotted spirits seek the overthrow of the sons of light. Meaning the the demons and Satan themselves are going to be going through waves of persecution before the judgment. And it's their, it's their desire to get us to go along with them and to suffer with it, which is what Revelation calls the bold judgments that were being poured out on the world currently and the other things that go on for the lamentation and distress and chastisement of men by evils that happen in creation because of what we're doing. So all of that's gone over in more detail in other places, but I just want to tie everything together there. <clears throat> but the son, or sorry, but the Elohim of Yisrael and his messenger of truth will succor all the sons of light. For it is he who created the Ruachoth of light and darkness and founded every action upon them, and established every deed upon their ways. 
and he loves the one everlastingly and delights in its work or his works forever. Proverbs 8. But the counsel of the other, he loathes and forever hates its ways. These are the ways in the world, or these are their ways, rather, in the world for the enlightenment of the heart of man, so that all the paths of true righteousness may be made straight before him, and so that the fear of the laws of Yahuwah may be instilled in his heart, a ruach of humility, patience, abundant charity, unending tovim, com comprehension, and intelligence, a ruach of mighty wisdom which trusts in all the deeds of Yahuwah and leans on his great loving kindness. All his deeds, like all the benefits that he's ever done for his children when they ask, if you've never read the books of the Maccabees, you're missing out on some of the most miraculous deliverances he's ever perpetrated, both within the minds of a man, saving an entire people in, in, a, in a nation or in a city, if you will, to causing nations to fall at the hands of a remnant that chooses to cling to him and stand for his law above all else. So there's amazing stuff in those writings that we can lean on and trust in but we have to know about them right <clears throat> a ruach of discernment in every purpose of zeal for right laws of kodesh intent with steadfastness of heart set apart intent with steadfastness of heart of great charity towards all the sons of truth, of admirable, admirable purity, which detests all unclean idols, of humble conduct sprung from a comprehension of all things, and of trustworthy concealment of the mysteries of truth. Okay, this is from our creator, the messenger of truth, if you will. <clears throat> These are the influences that you will get from him. If you really pay attention, take the time to sit there and think through these, look at them, look at what scripture says, you'll, you'll see it. And the more you see it, then you'll realize what's been going on in your own walk as you're, as you're going through this. <clears throat> if you're sincere, if you're not, uh, he knows. It says, these are the counsels of the Ruach to the sons of truth in this world. And as for the visitation of all who walk in this Ruach, it shall be healing, great shalom in a long life, and fruitfulness together with every everlasting Birach oath and eternal joy in life without end, a crown of esteem and a garment of majesty in unending light. And that's exactly what he promised all those that he healed, that he said, turn to me and be delivered when he came in the flesh. These are the things that he revealed and made known to us, exactly as it says here. But the ways of the Ruach of falsehood are these, greed and slackness in the search for righteousness. Wickedness and lies hauntiness and pride, falseness and deceit, cruelty and abundant evil, ill temper and much folly and brazen insolence, abominable deeds in a spirit of lust and ways of lewdness in the service of uncleanness, a blaspheming tongue, blindness of eye and dullness of ear, stiffness of neck and heaviness of heart, so that a man walks in all the ways of darkness and guile. And the visitation of all who walk in this spirit shall be a multitude of plagues by the hand of all the destroying messengers. Everlasting damnation by the avenging wrath of the fury of Elohim 
eternal torment, and endless dishonor, together with shameful extinction in the fire of the dark regions. The times of all their generations shall be spent in sorrowful mourning, and in bitter misery, and in calamities of darkness, until they are destroyed without remnant or survivor. The nature of all the children of men is ruled by these, and during their life all the hosts of men have a portion of their divisions and walk in their ways. And the whole reward for their deeds shall be for everlasting ages, according to whether each man's portion in their two divisions is great or small. For Yahuwah has established the Ruachoth in equal measure until the final age, and has set everlasting hatred between their divisions. Truth abhors the works of unrighteousness, and unrighteousness hates all the ways of truth and their struggle is fierce in all their arguments, for they do not walk together. But in the mysteries of his comprehension, and in his esteemed chokmah, or wisdom, Elohim has ordained an end for unrighteousness, and at the time of the visitation he will destroy it forever. That visitation, where it will be destroyed forever is the end the final that's it new shamayim new earth in which righteousness dwells and satan's no more there is no more tears or sorrow but that's going through what we have to live through now the millennial reign the releasing of satan and that indeterminate period until that is fully culminated <clears throat> so you're looking at at least another thousand years plus easily. And people don't, uh, we don't really get consideration of just the patience that our creator has for delivering the inner beings of men and his love for his creature. This is then truth which has wallowed in the ways of wickedness during the dominion of unrighteousness until the appointed time of judgment shall arise in the world forever. Yahuwah will then purify every deed of man with his truth. He will refine for himself man's frame by rooting out all spirit of unrighteousness from the bonds of his flesh. He will cleanse him of all wicked deeds with the Ruach of said apartness. Like purifying waters, he will shed upon him the Ruach of truth to cleanse him of all abomination and unrighteousness. And he shall be plunged into the Ruach of purification that he may instruct the upright in the knowledge of the Most High and teach the Chokmah or wisdom of the sons of Shamayim to the perfect of way. All right, so teach the wisdom of the sons of heaven, right, as they translate that in English, the chokma of the bene shemaim, to the perfect of way. <clears throat> for Eloah has chosen them for an everlasting covenant, and all the esteem of Adam shall be theirs. To the ones that are the sons of Shemaim, okay? There shall be no more lies, and all the works of unrighteousness or injustice shall be put to shame. Until now, the Ruach Oath of Truth and Unrighteousness struggle in the hearts of men, and they walk in both hokma and folly. According to his portion of truth, so does a man hate unrighteousness, and according to his inheritance in the realm of unrighteousness, so he is wicked, and so hates truth. For Yahuwah has established the two Ruach oath in equal measure until the determined end, and until the renewal. So, determined end, and the renewal, okay? Because there's more than one end that he's determined. 
there's an end of this age, there's the consummation in the beginning of the age to come, there's the end of the millennial reign and the releasing of Satan, and there's the end, the end end, to which there will be the renewal and a forever after, right? And this is part of the, the context of what you have to go through to determine what's true, where you don't things have things out of order from the natural order that he's established. And then you don't have things taken from others with super added stuff and then presented. It's just straight from him as delivered and then fully culminated or fully brought out, if you will. It says, and he knows the reward of their deeds from all eternity. He has allotted them to the children of men that they may know tov and evil and that the destiny of all the living may be according to the Ruach within them at the time of the visitation. And this is really the key that I, I was mentioning earlier. When we know that our Mashiach came and foreshowed the truth in all things, and that he literally does the will of the Father, he's his voice in, in his arm, okay, then the things that he said and how he reacted to those who had these one or the other ruach in them is exactly in line with what you can read here and it's a it's what we can look at just like the fact that he died and rose again is a for sure sign of the resurrection of his body to come of the believers that die in the truth from then on until he returns we can be assured if we trust him we have life everlasting and just like that you can be assured that we can judge what part of the, what kingdom we're in by the things we do. Not by the things that pop up in our head, but how we manifest it. And that's why Yahushua said it's by their fruits you shall know them. It's what we produce and bring out into the world that points which spirit is in us, if you will, and what kingdom we are adhering to so just a moment all right so here is another witness so we can have two witnesses to establish the matter and then again for anyone interested if you will if you truly want to pursue this topic there is over 22 pages worth of information on the two spirits or the two ruach oath or the way of life and the way of death from the Dead Sea Scrolls, the writings from the original covenant, and the writings from the renewed covenant times. So it's literally all over the place. But that was one from the original covenant times from the Dead Sea Scrolls. And then this is from what is called the Apostolic Constitutions in the renewed covenant times in what was given to the emissaries to share with the overseers to exhort the people with. So this is from Book 7, Section 1, on the two ways, the way of life and the way of death. Everything in brackets here is a title that was added by scholars or translators later on. It, it's not originally part of the text, so I usually don't read them. But you can feel free to pause and read through it if you choose to. And then also... I apologize, or I'm sorry for any type of spelling errors I might have. This was originally copied and edited in 2017. And I learned, I was learning the language. I'm still learning the language. And my comprehensions changed slightly over time on certain pronunciations. Al does not mean Elohim. That one is like Al is a pawn. Al Elion is to be up or most high if you will and then l like al is also to or toward or not so there's different pronunciations with aleph lamed that have different meanings and we shouldn't just make things up i didn't know at the time and i was trying to be sincere just like right now which is why i'm telling you so you got to be careful whenever you read those things right there. It's not always accurate, and I, I am sorry about that. 
but let's continue. It says, the lawgiver Moshe said to the Yisraeli, or the Israelites, if you will, Behold, I have set before your face the way of life and the way of death, and added, Choose life that you may live. Eliyahu the foreteller also said to the people, How long will you halt with both legs, or both your legs? If Yahuwah be Elohim, follow him. 1 Kings 18.21 Yahuwah Yahushua also said righteously, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Matith Yahu 6.24 We also, following our teacher Mashiach, who is the deliverer of all men, especially of those that believe, 1 Timothy 4.10, are obliged to say that there are two ways, the one of life, the other of death, <clears throat> which have no comparison one with another. And this is synonymous. You might not be able to see it quite clearly yet in the fellowship here or even in the body at large on the watch these videos, but the way of life is the common law those that adhere to the common law and the way of death is is the statutory system that's an usurpation or a usurpation sorry of that that's a practical application in our lives today for the two ways that every man gets to choose which they will follow <clears throat> this is we also following our teacher Mashiach who is the deliverer of all men especially of those that believe 1 Timothy 4:10 are obliged to say that there are two ways the one of life the other of death which have no comparison one with another for they are very different or rather entirely separate and the way of life is that of nature but that of death was afterward introduced It not being according to the mind of El, but from the snares of Hashatan, the adversary. That's what the Satan means. The first way, therefore, is that way of life, or is that of life, and is this, which the Torah does also appoint, to love Yahuwah your Elohim, or Yahuwah Elohim with all your mind and with all your soul, who is the one and only El, apart from whom there is no other, and your neighbor as yourself, and whatsoever you would not should be done to you, do not do to another. And that is from Luke 10, 26 through 28, and Tobiyahu 4, 15. Barak them that curse you, pray for them that despitefully use you, Matith Yahu 4 or 5 44. Love your enemies, for what thanks is it if you love those that love you? For even the nations do the same. Luke 6 32, Matith Yahu 5 46 through 47. But love those that hate you, and you shall have no enemy. For says he, You shall not hate any man, no not an Egyptian, nor an Edomite, for they are all the workmanship of Elohim. Avoid not the persons, but the sentiments of the wicked. Abstain from fleshly and worldly lusts. If anyone gives you a stroke on your right cheek, turn to him the other also. Not that revenge is evil, but that patience is more honorable. For Dawid says, if I have made returns to them that repaid me evil. That's in the psalm. And you also have the experience of him with Nabal and Abigail in the uh, book of Shemuel there. Where he lives out in the narrative, not requiting evil for evil return to him, but giving it to Yahuwah and reaping the rewards of that behavior. 
If anyone compels you to go one mile, go with him too. And he that will sue you at the law and take away your coat, let him have your cloak also. And from him that takes your goods, require them not again. Matthew Yahoo 540, Luke 6, 29 and 30. Give to him that asks you, and from him that would borrow of you, do not shut your hand. Matthew 542. For the righteous man is pitiful and lends. And it says in other places, Sirach, the recognitions, uh, all over the place, that we are to imitate our Father above and our Mashiach, the one who sent that is in his image and likeness, right? And as he is like the one who shines his light upon the wicked and the good and sends his rain upon the righteous and the unrighteous, we are to bestow the benefits that we have as able to provide for those that are around us in imitation, right? And that was from Psalm 37, 21 and 26. <clears throat> For your father would have you give to all, which is just like it says in the shepherd of her mass, and just like it mentions in the epistle of Barnabas, right? Not to question who it is you're giving to. Who himself makes his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sends his reign on the righteous and on the unrighteous. Matthew Yahoo 545. Okay. It is therefore reasonable to give to all out of your own labors, or says he, sorry, my, my dog got spooked. My puppy, you're a, you're a good girl. Sorry about that. For says he, honor Yahuwah out of your righteous labors, but so that the Kodeshim be preferred. And it's give Yahuwah of your fruits of your goods, of the first fruits of all your increase, then your storehouses shall be filled with plenty and your vats overflow with new wine. It's in the Proverbs as well. You shall not kill, that is, you shall not destroy a man like yourself, for you dissolve what was well made, not as if all killing were wicked, but only that of the innocent. But the killing which is righteous is reserved to the magistrates alone. Now, in other countries, it might be done in other ways, in common law countries, and in America in particular. It's supposed to be that every man is judged at the, uh, by a trial by jury. Twelve men of your peers, who use the law of Elohim as their bar for judgment, trying the facts and the law and everything in, in the case and whether or not the man and the issue at hand uh, should be corrected. And as they see, as they, as they have in their heart, according to his word, so they're supposed to judge. And if you remember, America is where the people are sovereign. And that's why we sit in judgment over our fellow man when they are violating or causing injury to the rights of another king. We sit as equals amongst them to judge it. But it has to be according to the king of kings rules or for us. It's, it, that's plainly simple. That's how our country was originally founded and supposed to work. It's just been perverted with stuff later on. The problem that we have, though, is just like Shaul, when he was told by Shemuel to put some people under the ban and to not allow any of their stuff to continue, he did not listen. He did not kill the king, and he allowed the people to partake of the goods to offer to Yahuwah and to rejoice before him, but it was contrary to what he said. And because his judgment was perverted as king and jury and executioner or magistrate, if you will, he did not do his duty. He himself suffered the thing that he did not put on the other. So you have it both ways. It's established in his word that a false witness, when it's found out, will suffer the punishment of the whatever they are trying to get the other to be accused of, whether it's confinement, loss of property, death, 
whatever, that's what they would suffer. And the very same thing would happen to an unrighteous judge who does not judge rightly over their fellow man. Doesn't matter if you're a king over a people or if you're a jury over a peer, it's the same law. So we have to be mindful of that. So that's the covenant that's being violated every time you have statutes being enforced in our country and people going to jail over that when there's no injury to a man, his character, or his property. Because that is the Torah. Love. Right? So back on track here. You shall not commit adultery, for you divide one flesh into two. They shall be one flesh, Bereshit 2.24. For the husband and wife are one in nature, in consent, in union, in disposition, and the conduct of life. But they are separated in sex and number. You shall not corrupt boys, Yikra or Leviticus 18.22. For this wickedness is contrary to nature and, and arose from Sodom, which was therefore entirely consumed with fire sent from Elohim. Bereshit or Genesis 19. Let such a one be accursed, and all the people shall say Amen, or so be it. Deuteronomy 27. You shall not commit fornication, for says he, there shall not be a fornicator among the children of Israel. Deuteronomy 23, 17. Or Deborim, right? It's the words or matters. You shall not steal for Achan, when he had stolen in Israel at Jericho, or Jericho, was stoned to death. That's in Yahushua chapter 7. And remember that Achan, the Valley of Achor, is what I talked about from Hosea. And I believe I believe it was in Amos or a different foreteller. But as the hope of expectation for the people coming to the truth after the Dark Ages was the Valley of Achor, where what happened with him after we separate from the people that have accursed themselves by taking what's under the ban, we won't be overcome by our enemies as we're going into the promised land here. There's patterns that we have to follow. Okay, that's the example there. And here's another reference to that. Yahushua chapter 7 is where you can find it. And Gehazi, who stole and told a lie, inherited the leprosy of Naaman, 2 Kings 5. You might not be aware of this, and for anyone who's if you don't even know who Naaman is, you can read about the account of who he is and what he does here. He's a leper that's actually healed by Elishua, or Elisha, if you will. And it was an example Yahushua said, like when there was a famine, Eliyahu didn't go to anyone in the land, but to someone of Phoenicia, right, out of Tyre, where they were paganized Hebrews and they weren't keeping his will generally as a nation but that one woman was pious she was found worthy he went to her in the same way naaman while he was an aramean he he kneeled at the right hand of the king as he sat and worshiped his idols but he had a right heart and he was accepted and because of that his leprosy was cured and he vowed to worship yahuwah only that he would forgive him that he had to kneel with his king in front of an idol, and it was forgiven him because he asked for it, okay? you What you might not know about him that isn't in Second Kings here, but what you can read about in Josephus is that he was the soldier, or he was the young, um, innocent one who shot the arrow and had killed the king but it had wounded him and they found out later that he died. That was not Amon. It doesn't mention in the text in what we call the Bible, but that's what made him famous. And that's why he became the right hand of the king of Ar Armenia there. But it's because of his heart, the disposition of who he is that Yahuwah knew 
that he was allowed to be cured of his leprosy when no others in the land were cured at that time. Just something to keep in mind. It says, and Yahuda, who stole the poor's money, this is Ish Kiriot or Yahuda. Um, I can't remember how they pronounce it in English, I'm sorry, but that's the one who betrayed our Mashiach. It says, Yahuda, who stole the poor's money, betrayed Yahuwah of esteem to the Yahudim. And that's from Yahukanon 12 6 or John, right? It says, and repented and hanged himself and burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Matthew Yahu 27 5, Acts 1 18. And Hanan Yahu and Sapphira, his wife, who stole their own goods and tempted the Ruach of Yahuwah, were immediately at the sentence of Kepha, our fellow sent one, struck dead. And that's Acts chapter 5. Yes, Judas and Judas Iscariot. There we go. Thank you. It's Yahuda Ish Kiriot, or the man of the city, the city man, if you will, which again, I don't really want to get into it now, but when you look at common law versus Babylonian or where it comes from, from Rome now, you have the law of our creator versus the law of the city, where Nimrod started enforcing rules on men was in a contained or controlled environment like that. You shall not use magic. You shall not use witchcraft, for he says... You shall not suffer a witch to live, and life is in the body of believers. You shall not slay your child by causing abortion, nor kill that which is begotten. For everything that is shaped and has received a nefesh, or inner being, from Elohim, that's that spark of life that you can witness, right? If it be slain, shall be avenged, as being unrighteously destroyed. You shall not covet the things that belong to your neighbor, as his wife, or his servant, or his ox, or his field. You shall not forswear, forswear yourself, for it is said, You shall not swear at all, Matthew 534. But if that cannot be avoided, you shall swear truly. And this is what is in relation to our country. Anyone that's a public servant in our government anyone that's in the military, anyone that's in law enforcement, you cannot do that unless you swear an oath, an oath to uphold the Constitution, which is a covenant with the Almighty. And any violators of that covenant, of that oath, will not be forgiven. This is, you shall not forswear yourself, for it is said, you shall not swear at all. Matthew 534. But if it cannot be avoided, you shall swear truly. For everyone that swears by him shall be commended. Psalm 63, 11. And it's, uh, that is in reference to our king who is the truth, right? <clears throat> you shall not bear false witness. For he that falsely accuses the needy provokes to anger him that made him. Proverbs 14, 31. You shall not speak evil. This is why I don't, I don't, anybody, I don't care living or dead. I don't talk evil about people. You shall not speak evil, for says he, love not to speak evil, lest you be taken away. Nor shall you be mindful of injuries, for the ways of those that remember injuries are unto death. You shall not be double-minded or nor double-tongued. For a man's own lips are a strong snare to him. Proverbs 6, 2. And a talkative man shall not be prospered upon earth. Your words shall not be vain, for you shall give an account for every idle word. Matthew 12, 36. Leviticus 19, 11. You shall not tell lies, for, says he, you shall destroy all those that speak lies. You shall not be covetous nor rapacious. For, says he, 
Woe to him that is covetous towards his neighbor with an evil covetedness. Habakkuk 2.9 You shall not be a, an hypocrite. There's another example of un before an H because the H is the hay, which was a vowel originally, and that is what became our E. Still a vowel in English, but different letter, different sound. Same character, though. It's an interesting phenomenon. The Hebrew letter He is a backwards capital E for us. <clears throat> but the, the sound is still considered a vowel in Old English. That's why you'll see that quite common in the older books and the further back you go. But you shall not be an hypocrite, lest your portion be with them. You shall not be ill-natured nor proud. For Elohim resists the proud. You shall not accept persons in right ruling, for the right ruling is Yahuwah's. You shall not hate any man. You shall surely reprove your brother and not become guilty on his account, and reprove a wise man and he will love you. Ishu, cast away from you all evil and all that is like it, for, says he, abstain from unrighteousness, and trembling shall not come near you. Be not soon angry, nor spiteful, nor passionate, nor furious, nor daring, lest you undergo the fate of Cain, and of Shaul, and of Yahuab, and, sorry, <clears throat> and of Yahuab. For the first of these slew his brother Havel, or Abel, because Abel, or Havel, was found to be preferred before him with Elohim, and because Havel's offering was preferred. The second persecuted Kadoshi, or set apart one Dawid, who had slain Goliath the Philistine, being envious of the praises of the women who danced. The third slew two generals of armies, Abner of Yisrael and Amasa of Yahuda. Again, we'll get to these in the course of reading the narratives for Kings and Chronicles, but that's and the first and second Shemuel. That's where most of this stuff is, and you get to see in uh, the course of the narration of how these things play out in regard to established law and then the consequences of them. So very beneficial for when we study that to keep in mind, we can learn how our lives will be affected in the things we do or the things that are done based on what is already previously established. Be not a diviner for that leads to idolatry for says Shemuel divination is sin. First Samuel 15, 23. There shall be no divination in Jacob, nor sooth saying in Yisrael. Numbers 23, 23. You shall not use enchantments or purgations for your child. You shall not be a soothsayer nor a diviner by great or little birds. Okay. Nor shall you lean or learn rather wicked arts for all these things has the law forbidden. Be not one that desires for evil, for you will be led into intolerable sins. You shall not speak obscenely, nor use wanton glances, nor be a drunkard, for from such causes arise whoredoms and adulteries. Be not a lover of money, lest you serve mammon instead of Elohim. Matthew Yahoo 6.24 be not vainglorious, nor haughty, nor high-minded, for from all these things arrogance does spring. Remember him who said, Yahuwah, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. I have not exercised myself in great matters, nor in things too high for me, but I was humble. Be not a murmurer, remembering the punishment which those underwent who murmured against Moshe. Be not self-willed. Be not malicious. Be not hard-hearted. Be not passionate. 
that means don't let your emotions rule you, okay? Be not mean-spirited, for all these things lead to blasphemy. But be meek, as were Moshe and Dawid, since the meek shall inherit the earth. Psalm 37.11, Matthew Yahu 5.5. 5. Be slow to wrath, for such a one is very prudent, since he that is hasty of spirit is a very fool. Be chesedi, or merciful, for prosperous are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew Yahu 5.7 Be sincere, quiet, tov, trembling at the word of Elohim. Yes, Yahu 66.2 you shall not exalt yourself as did the Pharisee, for everyone that exalts himself shall be abased. Luke 18, 14. And that which is of high esteem with man is abomination with Elohim. Luke 16, 15. You shall not entertain confidence in your inner being, for a confident man shall fall into mischief. You shall not go along with the foolish, but with the prudent and righteous. For he that walks with the prudent man shall be prudent, but he that walks with the foolish shall be known. Proverbs 13.20 Receive the afflictions that fall upon you with an even mind, and chances of life without overmuch sorrow, knowing that a reward shall be given to you by Elohim, as was given to Job and to Lazarus, or Eleazar, who was righteous and died and four days after was risen, if you remember. You shall honor him that speaks to you the word of Elohim, and be mindful of him day and night. And you shall fear him, or reverence him, not as the author of your birth, but as one that is made the occasion of your well-being. For where the doctrine concerning Elohim is, their Elohim is present. Just like Yahushua said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am with them. And the word is very near you, right? It is in your heart and in your mouth to do it. You shall every day seek the face of the Kodashim, that you may acquiesce in their words. The knowledge of the Kodashim is in the Proverbs. It's mentioned... It was the hidden knowledge that was revealed to his Kodashim are the eternal treasures that he mentions in the Dead Sea Scrolls that we've gone over. <clears throat> it says, you shall not make schisms among the Kodashim, but be mindful of the followers of Korok. You shall make shalom between those that are at variance, as Moshe did when he persuaded them to be friends. You shall rightly rule righteously, or you shall judge righteously. For the judgment or right ruling is Yahuwah's, meaning according to his Torah. That's why every man is supposed to judge according to the common law, right? You shall not accept persons when you reprove for sins, but do as Eliyahu and Micaiah did to Ahab or Ahab and abed Melek the Ethiopian, to Zadik Yahu, and Nathan to Dawid, and Yahukanon to Herod. Be not of a doubtful mind in your prayer, whether it shall be granted for no or no. For Yahu has said to me, Kepha, upon the sea, You of little belief, wherefore did you doubt? Matith Yahu 14.31 be not ready to stretch out your hands to receive, or hand to receive, and to shut it when you should give. Sirach 4.31 If you have by the work of your hands, give. If, not must. Okay? If you don't have it at times, someone's asking you, do like Zebulun did in his testament where he commiserated with the poor he could not feed anyone that wanted he gave fish to, 
and anyone he couldn't help, he commiserated with them. He'd go with them and do what he could. He would pray and, and lament with them as he was able, but he didn't give what he didn't have. And we shouldn't feel bad about that, okay? If you have by the work of your hands, give that you may labor for the redemption of your sins. For by alms and acts of steadfast fidelity, sins are purged away. Proverbs 16.6 Daniel 4.27 You shall not grudge to give to the poor, nor when you have given shall you murmur, for when or for you shall know who you will repay. Sorry, for you shall know who will repay you your reward. For says he, he that has mercy on the poor lends to Yahuwah according to his gift, so shall it be repaid him again. Proverbs 19, 17. You shall not turn away from him that is needy. For, says he, he that stops his ears that he may not hear the cry of the needy, himself also shall cry, and there shall be no none to hear him. Proverbs 21, 13. Or, in another sense, you're going to reap what you sow, right? You will get from him what you do to another when it is in your power to do so, right? <clears throat> you shall communicate in all things to your brother. Now, those all things is a specific list of the necessities of the life of man, right? They go over. The necessaries of life is in Sirach, okay? You shall communicate in all things to your brother and shall not say your goods are your own, for the common participation of the necessaries of life is appointed to all men by Elohim. You shall not take off your hand from your son or from your daughter. Shall not, doesn't matter how old they are, okay? But shall teach them the fear of Elohim from their youth. For says he, correct your son, so shall he afford you tov expectation. Proverbs 19.18 and remember, our Father above wants our repentance. If we don't, if, if we don't have someone exhorting us to turn from the things we're doing, which we do, we're not. We got to look and see whether or not we're doing that for our children. And if if we're not, we better. And once we do, we'll get the same. We just have to accept the correction when it comes, and be grateful, right? <laughs> But that's part of intelligently doing these things. Our Mashiach made the parable that the wicked of this age is wise or clever to do evil, but the righteous are not clever to do to do good. Oh, that we were, right? I would postulate that some men are, and, and they were very successful in their abilities to do it, Charles Finney being one of them. You shall not command your manservant or your maidservant who trust in the same Elohim with bitterness of inner being, lest they groan against you, and wrath be upon you from Elohim, and you servants be subject to your masters. Ephesians 6 5. As to the representatives of Elohim with attention and fear, as to Yahuwah and not to men. Ephesians 6 7. So, servants are to be subject to their masters because they are representatives of Elohim as the position of a master to a servant. And it's for that position, for that alone, and not for their character, not for how they treat them, not for any other merits of that man, but for the position and what it represents. They are to be subject with attention and fear. Let that sink in, you guys. It is nothing to do with who is president today that you respect that title and that man, that position, or that you pray for him. But you have people all over the country speaking evil, which we're told not to do, and not praying or, and judging, right? Speaking evil of the Elohim of your people or the judges of your people when we're not cognizant of the king of kings being the one who has authority of who's over you. And as with the people, so with the Kohanim. As with the people, so with the king. We get the government we deserve. 
you get the same thing when the book of uh, when you read through the book of judges that is like what we're living through in our country in america today we have no king over us but yahuwah alone we're all equal and when we turn from his law which is the common law our enemies have sub, sub, you know subjection over us they rule over us in tyranny and that is what has been happening since the civil war because we have been doing things that are offensive to him it says you shall hate all hypocrisy in whatsoever is pleasing to yahuwah that shall you do by no means forsake the commands of yahuwah but you shall observe what things you have received from him neither adding to them nor taking away from them for you shall not add unto the his words lest he convict you and you become a liar. Proverbs 36. You shall confess your sins unto Yahuwah, your Elohim, and you shall not add unto them, that it may be well with you from Yahuwah, your Elohim, who desires not the death of a sinner, but his repentance. You shall be observant to your father and mother as the causes of your being born, that you may live long on the earth which Yahuwah your Elohim gives you. Do not overlook your brethren or your kinsfolk, for you shall not overlook those nearly related to you. Yeshayahu 58.7 One of our national sins is that we allowed our government to instill a welfare system with the Social Security because we would not look after our near kin when they are in need. That's something we will have to, as a nation, repent from if we want liberty again. <clears throat> you shall fear the king, knowing that his appointment is of Yahuwah. I just, just mentioned that, right? His rulers you shall honor as the ministers of Elohim. And now we can see how much trouble we are in as a nation with the, the prevalence of how we treat public servants and the even the uh the tyrant in office i can't call him the president I, i'd be honest with you there was never a, a lawful election right you could see it on the news where they were tampering with the voting and even before that time since the civil war we have not had a unmolested election in a lawful government but i'll leave it there for now because we have things once we repent of these evils those things will correct themselves but this first okay <clears throat> his rulers you shall honor as the ministers of elohim for they are the revengers of all unrighteousness to whom pay taxes tribute and every oblation with a willing mind abiding by the laws of your nation now that is not abiding by tyranny that's added that is not law but actually unlawful that would be going along with violating the oath that you might have sworn to uphold it if you go along with violating it so there's different things to keep in mind here but again that's for a different day you shall not proceed to your prayer in the day of your wickedness before you have laid aside your bitterness this is the way of life in which may you be found through Yahushua Mashiach, our Yahuwah. And now the way of the evil is much shorter. Yet the way of death is known by its wicked practices, for therein is the ignorance of Elohim and the introduction of many evils and disorders and disturbances whereby come murders, adulteries, fornications, perjuries. If anyone doesn't know, that's saying something under oath and having it established as a fact not to be true, right? You perjure yourself. Unlawful lusts, thefts, idolatries, magic arts, witchcrafts, rapines, false witnesses, hypocrites, double-heartedness, deceit, pride, malice, insolence, 
covetedness, obscene talk, jealousy, confidence. And this is self-confidence. This is like, oh, I got everything figured out. I don't have to worry about things. Abraham was not self-confident, but he relied on the will of, he was not self-willed, but did the will of the one who sent him. Even to the laying up of his, his own son's life. And just for context there, you find this in Josephus. Yitzhak was 25 years old, almost 30 as a type and picture, right? When he was brought into uh, Mount Moriah there. But not having self-confidence, that's what that's about. It's not, we should be confident in the truth, but not in ourself. Hauntiness, arrogance, impudence, persecution of the tove, enmity to truth, love of lies, ignorance of righteousness. For they who do such things do not adhere to tovim or to right, righteous right ruling. They watch not for good, but for evil, from whom meekness and patience are far off, meaning it's in the fruits of their actions. It's in what they say and do. It's what they manifest in creation. Okay. Who love vain things, pursuing after reward, having no pity on the poor, not laboring for him that is in misery, not knowing or nor knowing him that made them, murderers of infants, destroyers of the workmanship of Elohim, that turn away from the needy, adding affliction to the afflicted, the flatterers of the rich, the despisers of the poor, full of sin. May you children be delivered from all these. See that no one seduce you from piety, for, says he, you may not turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have comprehension in all that you do. For if you do not turn out of the right way, you will not be unrighteous. And there is another direct witness that you can and should are and are expected to live without sinning <clears throat> after you come to the truth. But with that, thank you all. I do want to remind you there is a massive amount of more prevalent information in this topic, nuances of how the influences you, um, how you hear the voice of our creator through the Ruach and how not. Right, it's all gone over in detail in different places, and even in the two epistles on virginity from Clement, that's in the Anti Nicene writings, he covers on how you can have the power of miracles and healing after obedience and belief in prayer following this manner. So, it's also going over the two ways, kind of. It's very, very edifying. I highly suggest everyone check them out when able. But with that, you all have a wonderful rest of your Shabbat, a Shavuot Tov, wonderful week, and we will see you next time.